Being organized and prepared is a producer's secret weapon. So today I'm going to show you how I store, organize, and back up my music project so that you too can be on top of your game. Before we get started, don't forget to download my free production loop kit. This kit contains five original loops with stems and all major and minor triad chords and scales in MIDI form. The pack is totally free. You can get it by clicking the first link in the description. But without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so let's take a look at my workflow. So when it comes to my music, I work exclusively off of two hard drives, one for my sessions and then one for my samples, and both of which are two terabyte SSDs. You can use regular hard drives if you'd like, but SSDs will provide faster read and write times, and they are generally more reliable. If we take a look at my samples drive here, this one is super, super simple. I basically organize my samples based on creator and then pack name. So for example, if we go over here to Cardiac Drums, under his folder, you're going to see subfolders corresponding to the different packs that he's released that I've purchased. So that is basically how I store my samples, but now let's shift focus over to my sessions drive. Now I use this hard drive for video as well, which is why you can see a little video folder here. But in my main music folder, I have three subfolders titled beats, current project, and then studio one settings. Beats, as you can probably guess, houses all of my beats. Current project is where I store any projects that I'm currently working on, whether that's for a client or for my own releases. And then finally, Studio One settings is where I store all the settings for Studio One as the name suggests. Normally the Studio One settings are by default stored on your computer's native hard drive, but I like to put mine on an external drive. That way it's easier for me to find if I ever need to go back and access them later. This also helps if I am ever at someone else's place because I can easily access my templates by plugging in my hard drive into their system. Moving on to my Beats folder here, you're going to find three items. The first is simply just a text file that reminds me how I like to name my beats. So if you take a look here, the way that I name my beats is as follows. First, I have my name, X, and then collaborator name if there is one, dash, the beat name, and then in parentheses, I have the key, underscore, BPM, and then in brackets, I have the date that I made the beat. Below that text file, we have two more folders, one for finished beats and then one for ideas. So let's take a look at the ideas folder first. Diving into the ideas folder, here you can see that I have more folders categorizing my beats into the different genres that I like to produce. I am all over the place. So as you can see here, I have folders for boom bap, cinematic, dance, lo-fi, one that I apparently need to categorize, pop, R&B, Trap Soul, Reggaeton, Trap, and then West Coast. You might only produce one or two genres, so in that case, just build your categories accordingly. Finally, if I click on a category here, you can see the actual Studio One song folders containing my beats. So now that you know the structure for my ideas folder, here's the logic. When I sit down to work on music every morning, I ask myself a couple of different questions. Number one is, do I want to make something new? If the answer is yes, then the following question is, what genre do I want to create? If I know exactly what I want to create, then I tell Studio One on startup to create that beat folder in the correct genre folder within the ideas folder. If I don't know what I want to make yet, then I simply tell Studio One to create that beat folder in the ideas folder itself. And then later when I have something going on, I can manually drag it and drop it into the correct genre category. If on the other hand, I don't want to start something new, but rather pick up from a previous session, then I can simply go into any one of these genre categories and then select an idea and go from there. To make this process even easier, I even bounce a little beat snippet here, I'll show you in a minute, that I can then list to afterwards to decide if this is something that I really want to work on or not. Now, an important thing to note here is that whenever I sit down to create, I don't always finish a whole beat. Sometimes I just create a chord progression. Sometimes it's just a drum pattern. And then sometimes it's the entire beat. It really just depends. But okay, that was my ideas folder. So now let's talk about what happens when I actually finish a beat. If you look at my finished folder here, you will find two subfolders titled beat sessions and masters. If you click on any of these two folders, you will see that they both contain the exact genre category folders that we saw in the ideas folder, with the only exception being that in the beat sessions folder, I store the actual beat session from Studio One, while in the masters folder, I store the exported MP3 or wave of the beat. So then to take it back, when I finish a beat, I export it and I apply the naming structure that we talked about before, and I send it to the appropriate genre folder within the master subfolder that we just discussed. Similarly, I take the entire beat folder that Studio One created when I started the session, and I drop that into the appropriate category within the beat session subfolder. Now, why do I do this? Well, it's simply to facilitate exhibition. Sometimes when I have clients over or when I'm at somebody else's studio, there will be a situation where an artist wants to hear beats. If you ever been in those scenarios and you know that it oftentimes takes a few beats before the artist picks the one that they like. Having all my beats organized and categorized this way just makes the entire process way more seamless. So let's say 
for example that I have someone over and they say, show me some trap soul beats. Instead of fumbling trying to find one that you think they might like and then having to back out again and then go back in and so on, I simply head over to finished, masters, RMP and trap soul, and then start playing. To make this even easier, on a Mac at least, you can hit the first one, hit the space bar, and that'll begin playback, and then you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to go back and forth. So let me show you here for example. You get the idea. Having everything organized in this way also helps even when I'm just sending beats out because it makes everything really, really easy to find. Now, to make accessing this all just really, really easy, the last two pieces to my workflow are a Stream Deck and then a Mac app known as Alfred. Let me know if you want a dedicated video showing these two pieces of software and how I use them to make music creation faster and easier, but basically a stream deck is a macro pad that you can assign different commands to the buttons. And then I leverage that to access folders really, really quickly. So let me give you an example here. Here I've exited out of all my hard drives. And now with the click of one button on my stream deck, I'm going to bring up my beats folder. And then from here I can proceed as I wish. Alfred on the other hand is like the spotlight feature on Mac, but on steroids because it has a deeper integration into your computer and it can pretty much find anything. So for example, if I'm here and someone says again hey show me some trap soul beats i can say okay trap look at that masters and i'm here i'm going to be linking both of these tools down below in case you want to check them out but again let me know if you want a dedicated video of me showing how i leverage both of these tools to get my work done okay so so far you've seen my storage and organization workflow but now let's talk about backing up now, I don't have to tell you how important backing up your music is because it doesn't matter if you make the best beat in the world if you lose your work. I've learned this the hard way after losing a one terabyte hard drive, so here's what I do now. As mentioned in the beginning, I have two main hard drives that I use, my working drive, which contains my music and video projects, and then my samples drive. I back up both of these drives to a five terabyte desktop hard drive, which you can see here called backup, and I do that once a week. From there, I take this five five terabyte backup drive and I back that up into the cloud using a service called Backblaze. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but Backblaze is a great service to back up your stuff to the cloud for a really affordable fee. I think I only pay like $7 a month. The best part about Backblaze is that I believe you can even back up your entire computer if you want to. And if you ever lose anything, they can mail you back a copy of your data. Now, as far as how I back up to my physical five terabyte hard drive, for that, I use a really handy software called Carbon Copy Cloner. I've done a full video about this software in the past and I can do an updated one if you guys want to, but basically it is a backup automation helper because you determine the source, the target, and then the backup frequency, and it does it all for you automatically in the background. So as mentioned before, I back up my working drive and my samples drive into my backup drive, and I have the software do it for me automatically every Monday at noon. Now as a bonus, this software also integrates with things such as Dropbox. So another bonus to having just a master's folder of exported MP3 and WAV files of my beats is that I can then go back in here and tell it to back up that master's folder to my Dropbox so that I can basically have my beats with me everywhere I go. But there you have it. That is how I store, organize, and back up my music. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Don't forget to download my free production loop kit link down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.